if you're not a hardcore NBA dude or you're not in L.A., you're like, why do I care about a regular season game when, you know, it's just another regular season game? Totally understand. The context to it is the Lakers are trying to not be in the play the play-in tournament. They're trying to be in the regular playoffs. And they've been playing, inarguably, their best basketball of the year. They run up on the L.A. Clippers, who are still waiting and hoping, I think, to see if Paul George is going to play in the playoffs. Meanwhile, they're playing themselves kind of into shape. And what happened was the final score, not indicative of what actually took place in the game. Um, the Clippers hop out, I think, a 15-3 to start. Um, the game got a little bit close in the third quarter. And then final score, not truly indicative, 125-118. And I can go through the particulars of, hey, LeBron, statistically, in terms of shooting percentage, outstanding, 33-8-7. But we won't be hearing goat noises when he's interviewed after the game because he wasn't particularly good, especially in the first half. And if you look at plus minus, he was actually a minus 10. They played better without him on the floor as opposed to with him on the floor. Wasn't moving well defensively, struggling offensively until the game seemed a little bit, uh, wasn't in doubt anymore. But like, I'm not going to nitpick the fact that LeBron has been really good since returning from his foot injury, where apparently some doctors told him he should have it amputated. And instead, he decided to miraculously come back and help his team. Right. Well, you know, a couple of doctors said I should sit out the year and have surgery, but I'm going to heroically return. Like, OK. Um, the, the truth is that the Lakers lost this game when the schedule was made, right? And they, they kind of had to, you know, pick their poison, right? Do we go for it against the Jazz the previous night on the road, or do we go for it against the Clippers? And they chose to go for it against the Jazz and won a very close game, you know, a very close game playing in altitude against a team with kind of nothing to lose in Utah, right? It was like 135, 133. That game's exhausting anyway. Then you take into account it's in altitude. Then you take into account you had to play back-to-back. Oh, yeah, by the way, the Clippers hadn't played a game since Saturday. They're fresh, rested, right? Like, man, when you're in an NBA season and you get a couple days off, you're like bouncing. Guys are different in warm-ups. How Kawhi Leonard played the entire second half whether it was to stretch him out and get him ready for the, a playoff run well he'll, ha- he'll have to play extended minutes, which is, I think, what it was, or the fact that Ty Lu wanted to make sure they won that game, probably a little bit of that as well. Regardless of which, like even LeBron said after the game, like th- this was what Phil Jackson used to label a schedule loss. It's one of the tougher, uh, toughest games we've had this year, just uh, you know, coming off the road trip, and even though this was a road game, you know, just – um, you know, getting back, you know, late last night, but after an overtime game, and you know, it was a tough game for us. Obviously, we started off in the first half, not so playing Laker basketball. We had some good spurts, but uh, not enough. So this is one of those uh, those scheduling conflicts, you know, in the season, <laughs> and uh, definitely got the best of us tonight. I, like you can sit here and go, like, well, that's an excuse. Well, that's a reality to it, right? It's a reality to it. I remember they had played Chicago on the road, Minnesota on the road, and then Houston. Again, and I know they, they won the game by 30, right? And Anthony Davis had 40. But these are games they have to win, and they had to play and had to play well in order to make sure they were not only in the play-in tournament, but potentially in the regular playoffs. So they chose to go for it, got stretched to overtime, win in overtime, 135-133, have to turn around, fly back home, take on the Clippers, who are healthy. I understand, okay? This is not an excuse, it's an explanation. But, but, I'm having a hard time thinking they could win a title. I I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to say. It's like, uh, it's, both of these things can, can, can coincide. Both of these arguments, can, you can say like, hey man, look, they weren't winning that game as soon as the schedule is made. Got it. But I also understand that, you know, look, the Suns are, and people, well, the West is a mess. Like, no, 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 not so much. If you're paying attention, 
the West, all those guys weren't playing, and now they are. Andrew Wiggins, not going to play in the regular season, will play in the playoffs. The Warriors are going to be right come the playoffs. The Suns, well, now you got Kevin Durant. He's played enough minutes. He'll be ready for the playoffs with the new look Suns. Oh, I don't know what happens with Paul George, but it looks like the Clippers have figured out their rotation. I mean, Bones Highland played well last night, right? They kind of figured Russ is, seems well integrated into what they're doing. Like, I'm, I'm not huge on them without Paul George, but it's pretty obvious that they continue to smack around the L.A. Lakers. Like, look around. Zion returns likely for the New Orleans Pelicans, who qualified for the play-in. Like, all of those teams outside of maybe the Clippers with Paul George should be healthy and should be right and should be better than the regular season version. And then I look at the Lakers, who are doing everything in their power to make that last push. And again, if we're honest, who'd they beat? Yes, they beat Phoenix, okay, but KD didn't play. Um, DeAndre Ayton also didn't play. And fairly, LeBron didn't play either. But Orlando, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Minnesota, Houston, Utah. Who are you actually beating? So this is not me crapping on the fact that they've been playing way better that they found an absolute diamond in the rough in the hillbilly mamba, and he's established himself in a new role. It, it it's, I think Rob Palinka in the save of what he did with one trade at the trade deadline, getting rid of the toxicity of Russ, and then getting a group of better players, better fit for what they have, and Anthony Davis for the most part playing great basketball, playing through a tweaked ankle. They saved their season. But you watched last night and you're like, I have a hard time thinking they're a playoff team. I'm like a, a excuse me, a, a title contender. I understand that we go into this, you know, hey man, it's a LeBron team and LeBron teams in the playoffs. Bro, he's 40. He's 40. And box score guys looks like LeBron was awesome. Like, mm. and I know that they've eliminated the back-to-backs in the playoffs. And the idea is, hey, if it's not on a back-to-back, he can still be great. Not sure if you're aware of this. NBA playoff basketball is a different sport than regular season basketball. The, the, level, the level is so much higher. And what it does to your body and breaks you down so much more, and is so much harder to recover. He has the greatest longevity in the history of the sport in terms of, like, Kareem was playing at this age, but Kareem couldn't do much of anything at this age, by comparison. But he's at this age. And while it's a far better team with far better chemistry since they got rid of Russ and and added a lot of pieces that fit better, that ain't a championship team. Last night, we write the loss off as a scheduling loss. Totally fair. But I have a hard time going, that team's going to win a championship. Bad spot, but that doesn't eliminate the idea, to, to me at least, that they're not really a contender. They're just interesting. Just interesting. Interesting.